Greetings, dear viewers, and welcome to this exciting and enlightening journey into the world of advanced material through our exclusive video series, Fibercraft Insights, unveiling the strength of GFRB. So the next few episodes, uh, we are thrilled to bring you a comprehensive exploration of glass fiber reinforcement polymer, GFRB, and its merit benefits into the construction and infrastructure industry. So this is our first episode. We call it as a GFRP Demystified, where we'll, we'll dwell into the basics, the fundamentals. We'll try to break down the complex concepts into simple, understandable bits. And to guide us through this journey, uh, we are honored to have Mr. Pierre Hockman, a distinguished expert in the fields of GFRP. So he will share his uh, valuable insights and perspective with us. So I welcome you, Pierre, and thank you for joining us today. If I uh, talk specifically about the construction or infrastructure industry, I see there is a limited awareness about the GFRP. People are using it, but I would say there are more myths than the facts about it. So please uh, guide us through what are the basic constitutes or the elements of the composition which constitutes the GFRP together. Thanks for having me and thanks for this uh, great first question. So. As you introduced in the, um, earlier, GFRP stands for uh, Glass Fiber Reinforced Polymer. Uh, these are composite material. And uh, um, in the name, we get the, the two parts, the two key parts of the product. Uh, on one side, the glass fiber uh, is around 80% of the product by mass. This is really uh, selecting the right fiber allows us to get the right uh, mechanical property and especially tensile property. So most of the behavior of the material comes from uh, the fiber and also the fiber contents. Um, on the other side of the spectrum, uh, fiber reinforced polymer, the polymer, uh, we are using a different type of uh, thermoset resin uh, and the choice of the resin is depending on the application. So on one side, for temporary application, we are using polyester resin. Uh, by temporary application, we mean uh, all kind of uh, ground engineering, geotechnical tunneling application that will last typically up to two years. And when we have a long-term application that can be 50, 100, 120 years, we have to use a resin that is engineered for long-term behavior, long-term performance. And that's either vinyl ester or epoxy. Um, interestingly, the resin is, bringing, is uh, bringing two advantages or two contribution to the product. One of them is for the transfer of the load. So the idea is the resin will be connecting all the fiber to, to, uh, together. So to transfer the load, to distribute it within the matrix, within the, within the network of fiber. The other function of the resin is to protect the fiber from the environmental uh, environment. Okay, okay. I think that's very clear. So when we propose this as a potential alternative to, let's say, steel, so what are those distinct benefits? Of course, we'll get into more details in the subsequent episodes, but on a very broad level, what are the key advantages of GFRP over steel? So um, GFRP, uh, GFRP has many advantages. It would take, as you said, several episodes to, to distinguish that. But there are a few uh, key properties. Maybe uh, allow me to, to show you uh, what a, a GFRP bar uh, looks like. Um, maybe it's hard to see on the video, but it's extremely light. Uh, first advantage is uh, the density is around two. So it's four times lighter than steel. Uh, and that's uh, amazing when it's, we talk about installation, productivity, uh, handling, even safety uh, makes it very easy. Uh, together with the, the weight, I think the strength is also interesting because we, we see this product having a great strength to weight ratio. Why is that? Is the tensile properties of the material are close to two times uh, stronger uh, ultimate tensile strength than a steel rebar. But we'll have to dive into the tensile properties in a specific episode because the behavior is different. And so it's important to look at the, the, the specifics. But in general, it's, it's, it's much stronger. Um, then come several benefits. I mentioned that polyester resin is typically used for temporary application. This is because GFRP are very good in cutability. So it's easy to destroy, to break through the product. And then mostly something that is used in tunneling or mining application, uh, the necessity to go through an obstacle or to break through 
an existing structure. And so we have a lot of bold anchors or what we call soft eye application. On the other side of the spectrum, there are all the permanent application. And I think this is the most exciting um, in the newer development of the material. So GFRP are excellent in corrosion uh, resistance. I would say as such, there's no corrosion happening with the material, but also we'll have to do some episodes just to tackle the long-term behavior of the material. Uh, last but not least, there's a few niche added benefits, uh, electrically non-conductive, which helps in some high voltage power environment, thermally non-conductive, which is great in mostly uh, very hot or very cold countries, and even for very specific application, the fact that it doesn't transmit radio frequency, it's uh, magnetically uh, neutral, uh, so those, this could also be some additional benefits. Absolutely. I mean, it's really good to know about these key advantages. Uh, but when you see as a, any designer's point of view or a technical team's point of view, whenever we propose any new technology or any alternative material, the first thing comes to their mind is what are the codal provisions? What are the design considerations? So can you just uh, guide us more onto this? Are there any existing codal provisions, any considerations to be kept in mind while we, we design with the GFRP? So maybe first I, I want to highlight at the scale of uh, construction, this might be seen as a new technology, but actually those composite FRP, they are uh, probably 60 or 70 years old now. Uh, they've been uh, developed in the late 50s uh, in North America. So this is not completely new technology, but uh, there has been uh, codes and, provi and uh, code of provision for a while. Um, around 20 years ago, uh, ACI, the American Concrete, Concrete Institute, released a set of uh, guidelines that was covering design, uh, specification, testing, and have been evolving over the years um, till, I would say, today, uh, they remain the reference. And so you have uh, actually uh, ACI 440.11, which is a code, uh, not a guideline anymore, a design code to uh, design a structure. And all the testing part has been transferred to ASTM standard. So typically ASTM D7957 is covering both specification and testing. So that's for the Genesis coming from USA. Maybe to highlight uh, in May of uh, this year, 2024, Eurocode will be releasing the re revision of Eurocode 2. And there is Annex R that is covering also um, uh, the, the design of using GFRP rebind concrete. So Europe is getting geared uh, up for that. But interestingly enough, India uh, made that move even earlier. And so there are actually uh, two IS standards that have been released at the end of last year. Um, so in, 20, in December 2023, had been released first the test method for FRP rebar, which is IS um, 18255. And there's also the specification for the material, so the expected performance. So specification for solid bar, which is IS 18256. So today, both with, between the international and the local uh, codal um, governance or, or guidance, there's uh, everything needed to uh, successfully design and implement GFRP Rebar. Right, right. All right, Pierre, thank you. Thanks a lot for this uh, very uh, useful information. And I'm sure our audience also would find our discussions quite engaging and informative. So uh, in the next episodes, maybe we'll dwell a little more uh, we'll dive deeper into the technical properties. Uh, we are calling it as uh, unlocking the technical marvel. So we will take some of the key technical properties and we'll discuss more onto that. So meanwhile, I'll also appeal all our audience, if you have any other questions, if you want any specific topics to be included, please write to us and we'll try to include this as a part of our discussion. So stay tuned and we see you in the episode two. Please take care of yourself. Bye.